Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to TGCon Live 2020. I hope you're enjoying yourself thus far. Thank you very much for joining us for today's Solution Spotlight webinar on Networked Specification Management from Trace Canes. My name is Matthew Passananti, and I'll begin today's session by providing you with an overview of the product. Following the presentation, I'll turn it over to our Sales Operations Manager, Ruben Galbraith, who will guide us through a product demonstration. And finally, we'll open it up for 15 minutes of the, at, the, at the end of the webinar for a question and answer session. If you have questions or you think of one during the presentation or demo, please let us know by typing it into the chat box and we'll be happy to answer your questions at that time. Again, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, I, I, I'm having fun. I'm learning a lot. I hope you are too. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we'll highlight some of the most beneficial features of network specification management from Trace Gains. We'll begin by showing how network specification management allows food, beverage, and CPG companies to author, maintain, and publish raw materials and finished goods specifications in a single platform. Next, you'll learn how version control ensures up-to-date specifications are used, reducing out-of-spec inventory, rejected shipments, corrective action requests or cars, and costly rework due to non-compliant materials. Then you'll see how automated workflows and alerts for internal and external stakeholders uh, allow updates and approvals, streamline documentation and information exchange. And with network connectivity, you'll learn how companies have immediate access to more than a million supplier provided documents to accelerate specification and creation updates. Now, our specification management solution digitizes everything from raw materials to packaging to finished goods specifications, and it delivers instant access to information insight and audit trails. And finally, you'll see how this data can be used to power dashboards and reports to determine compliance against label claims, nutrition targets, thresholds like Prop 65, and country of origin to mitigate risk due to conflicts or natural events. In the end, you'll see how network specification management from Trace Gains will deliver professional specifications that improve customer satisfaction. Now we build specification management to help solve the challenges our customers were facing in creating and managing specs. And here are some of the most common challenges we see in the market today. Many manufacturers and brand owners and retailers don't fully utilize suppliers as collaboration partners when creating specifications. And the result is prolonged negotiations over attributes and tolerances. And we find that communicating with suppliers and co-manufacturers about specification updates is often a manual and time-consuming process. Now, for many, maintaining detailed and current raw materials and finished goods specifications is cumbersome, especially when version control, authorization, and audit trails are needed. Stakeholders often exchange information through email and voicemail, making it nearly impossible to track agreements, information, or supporting documents. Now, across the board, ensuring suppliers and stakeholders have the latest version of a specification is difficult without automated workflow and updated notifications. And we see that siloed data across R&D, quality, and regulatory and purchasing departments will delays specification creation and slows down new product development. And finally, because specifications are stored in static filing systems and data can't be leveraged for reports and business insights. So if you're with us today, maybe you're experiencing one or more of these problems. We, we hear from a lot of companies that creating and updating specs is labor intensive and slow. Now one hurdle is the extra time it takes to reach out to other departments. Many businesses are still using static tools like Word, Excel, phone calls, and email that make it nearly impossible to track status and understand progress. And if the collaboration within your business and across departments wasn't challenging enough, it gets even harder when you're working with supply chain partners. Now, customers tell us that a lot of data is required for every spec, and that's just for a single ingredient or item, let alone a finished goods spec. Since most of your suppliers have already loaded documents and items into Trace Gains Network, we wanted to make it easier for you. With our spec solution, you just connect to your suppliers and items in Trace Gains Network, and you get instant access to all of that data to speed up your spec process. You no longer have to track down suppliers and ask for information or documents because you already have what you need. We call it Network Specification Management. It's a beautiful name. And we're the only solution on the market that does it. Our specification management solution is connected to TraceGains Network for instant access to more than a million supplier-provided documents. 
the speed up specification creation and updates. In fact, the industry we serve, companies find that on average about 80% of their suppliers are already on TraceGains network. Then we have five steps to network specification management. First, you connect to your suppliers in TraceGains network and gain instant access to documentation and data that auto-populates your configurable spec templates. Next, when you're ready to receive input on your specs from a supplier, they'll receive an, uh, a system alert to act. They'll then open the spec, edit fields, add comments, attach documents, and approve or decline the spec. At that point, you'll receive an alert letting you know that the spec is ready for your review. And finally, you can review the spec, sign it off, lock it down, and publish it. And this all means that companies are in compl complete control choosing which suppliers can access shared specifications, allowing them to author or edit, review read-only sections, add comments, attach documents, negotiate attributes, and approve or decline specifications with all correspondence and agreements tracked digitally. So here's a question for you. Is the critical data your company needs to make, sell, or buy products stored in multiple spreadsheets and across shared drives? Not only does it make it hard to manage specs, but you're missing out on insights that could make a huge difference for your business. And with so much information to track, keeping it organized is hard. It isn't enough to have a record of your processes. You need to access so much more. You need ingredients, lists, organic certifications, chemical formulas, details of temperature settings, and so on. You don't have time to sift through emails, share drives, sluggish databases, or worse, filing cabinets. Not only is it slow, but what do you do when you need to find the one document that you need? Without easy access to spec details, controlling food, safety, and quality is difficult. But you know what? We can help. With trace gains, you can digitize everything from raw materials to packaging to finished goods specifications, turning detailed spec information and documents into digital records that are stored in one place with instant access for anyone in the team and from any device. TraceGains takes the data from your specifications, organizes it, and uses it to power configurable dashboards and reports. You can report on things like compliance against label claims, nutrition target thresholds, country of origin, and more, all giving you a competitive advantage. And with an open API, you can pass data from your ERP or PLM system into TraceGains, and this gives you complete supply chain visibility. If you don't have a full-blown PLM system, don't worry. TraceGains will manage it all for you without the need of a PLM. If you're experiencing a spec version control nightmare, I don't need to tell you how stressful it can be. Managing specs without automated version control is a risk your business does not need to take. With different versions floating around, it's impossible to track such vital information, and losing control of versions can send your spec project into chaos. So how do you regain control when your spec program isn't working for you? With trace gains, you get workflow and alerts that automate this process. It's simple because everyone on the team receives alerts to complete their tasks alongside automated steps that speed up the process and improve accuracy. And if you have a question or want to check the status, you don't have to pick up the phone or send an email because everything's already there. What's more, trace gains give you long-term change history for every spec. Having the annotated history at your fingertips means you're always audit ready, and everyone on the team, including suppliers, has the right version. Working off the right specs reduces out of spec inventory, rejected shipments, cars, costly rework due to non compliant materials. So, in today's presentation, you learned how network specification management from Trace Gains gives companies a much faster and more accurate way to author publish, and manage raw materials and finished goods specifications. In our demo, you'll see game-changing benefits of a single platform for specs and other critical business processes to connect teams internally and automate supplier relationships and document management, providing a single source of truth accessible with any device and by any stakeholder. You'll discover the benefits of digitizing your specs and other supply chain documentation for powerful business insights, risk management, and compliance. And you'll also see firsthand how much faster and more effective it is to collaborate with suppliers through a shared platform during the spec creation process. Being network connected means instant access to more than a million supplier-provided documents 
that can be leveraged to auto-populate configurable spec templates and act accelerate spec creation and updates. With sophisticated change management capabilities, you can zoom in on a specification to edit a section or an attribute, and all changes automatically cascade to associated specifications, giving you the confidence that specs are always up to date so you don't have to worry about downstream rework or waste. And finally, you'll see how workflows and alerts streamline and automate business processes for automated version control and complete audit trails with supplier acknowledgement required for every change. At this point in our presentation, I'd like to bring in Ruben Galbraith, our software sales engineer, and his very impressive sneaker collection to provide a demo covering many of the scenarios we've spoken about. Ruben, please take it away. Thank you, Matthew. So today we're going to be giving a live tour of our specification management module. Before we jump into the actual product, uh, a brief preamble of what this module is all about. It's about tracking your specifications, those rather complex documents that speak to how you're going to test incoming ingredients, exactly how your finished goods should be coming out, and how you track those over their lifetime. As we make your way through the demo today, start to compare this in your head against current processes. Think about how a Word document can be a little bit tricky for recording details on how you're going to test for microbials. How a PDF document is tricky to email back and forth with your supply chain as you pin down those fine grained details around a product you're producing. So with that preamble out of the way, let's jump on over into our specification management module, which is almost entirely housed within this single tab, spec management, of course. Before we dive any deeper, let me give a little bit of the lay of the land here. So what we're looking at here in this table, this dashboard called specifications all, every single row represents a single spec. That's not quite true though. It's really a single spec at a certain stage of its life. For example, I'm gonna filter down this page here to just look at our specifications for salt. I guess also a flake salt snuck into the mix. What we can see here is how this salt spec has made its way through different versions over time that we're tracking in trace gains. Each version has different statuses. Is it the archived old one? Something we're working on? Currently approved spec? Things of that nature. These can also have sub-statuses, which guide possibly through different internal workflows. Is it time for the QA team to be working on this? Procurement, R&D, and so forth. Off to the right, we have some additional metadata. Who signed off on this? Approver 1, Approver 2, Approver 3. Who updated it last? Who created it? And so forth. Last but not least, and making our way back to the left column over here, we have this concept of master and shared specifications. A master one is your internal spec. Think of that as the gold standard. A shared version is one that you blast out to one of your collaborators. This could be an ingredient supplier, could be a co-manufacturer. And what you're going to have them do within the system via their free account is log in, either sign off and say, yes, this is just as we plan on providing your ingredient, or perhaps type in information which really is within their wheelhouse. That's a big part of this module here, recording exactly what you need per style of spec. If I went back a page here and got rid of that kind of narrow down for salt, we'd see that the specs in this demo site are following different templates. That means the details, if I clicked into the record for this raw material that's a spice, there would be different data fields to record any of the characteristics around it. And naturally, a spice might be different than a dietary supplement ingredient, where you might be recording the exact plant part of aloe vera. Those are going to be radically different than a dairy product for vanilla milk, which itself, as a finished good, would be quite different than a frozen good like this Italian lasagna. Just let it be known as we work our way into our example today of salt, at least for starters, that what we're seeing is just a mock-up, a possible configuration of all the data fields you might want to have. When we set up your special version of, of specification management, what we would do is we would take your existing specs and bet out just the sections you would want, which have just the different sub-data fields that you need. We call these attributes. All right, enough of that aside, let's start looking at this detailed specification for salt. And just kind of place this in context here, let's pretend we're building out this spec. 
you know, maybe we've never used salt before at this fictional company of Butterhouse, and we want to come up with our master specification, make sure we can get it from our suppliers and track every step along the way. So right now, this is the fourth version apparently of this spec we've been working through. It's currently at an in-process state. If this was ready to be locked down and I toggled it over to approved, of course it would make me re-enter my password. That big change, the status change, would become part of the audit trail, along with literally every single tiny minute change over time. We have this interface, which of course you can download this whole audit trail to show who changed what field at what time for what reason and all of that. We're going to come back to a few more of the bells and whistles at the top of this page, but let's take a little bit of a look at this thing here. So here we have it broken down into six different sections, the first of which material overview is really logistical. You got a feeling that your specs probably have a name, a place to put down a code. We'd replicate those and give you data fields for that. Just below that though, as I start to scroll down the page, you'll notice we have some neat types of controls here that can really guide a spec through its different stages of life, particularly for these around internal collaboration. So here we have here a preset group of different departments that might need to touch a spec. Imagine this, I'm in the procurement team, I did my work, now it's time for QA to work on it. I could toggle over to this setting, hit save, and have an automatic workflow, send an email to a certain user, or maybe an entire group of users, the QA department, that says, heads up, salt spec with this ID, needs your input on it, here's a link to go jump into that record. As they do so, they might land here, make their way through and eventually even put in their own approval. In this little demo environment, I have the rights to do every approval for procurement or quality, but odds are you'd have this locked down so only certain people can put in their name and say, yes, they're signing off on this on whatever date. Off to the right, if your eyes were wandering at all, you start to notice some of the other types of things you might be recording, and this is just a mishmash. What I like to illustrate though is that we have particular types of inputs that can align with the right sorts of data. So if you have a field for organic in your specs and you don't want one person typing in totally organic, the next person typing in 100%, you can lock this down and have it be a yes, no data type or a true false or an image or maybe a numerical value to make sure that someone puts down the case weight and that it falls within a reasonable realm of uh, less than 1000 pounds. All these things which are tricky to do in Word we try to make just a little bit easier along the way. <clears throat> I'm not going to bore you going through every single field here, but just to round out the set, we also have rich text fields where there's some light formatting, sort of like a lightweight version of Word to put down ordered lists, instructions of production, ideas of how to palletize and store. Here's another one of those drop downs that's set with a certain group of options, even one that's color coded based off of temperature. If I did above 80 degrees, I think this turns into a red field or something like that. A little bit lower down in the page, we have this huge area of different testing properties. Some just being text fields, organoleptic and chemical properties. Other ones being our special measurement test field, where you can put in a range of values. For example, not less than, not more than, target amount, unit of measure, which can be have a whole set of drop downs. Testing methodology, another big set of drop downs. Long story short, if you are recording it in a spec today, odds are we have a data input to align to that. Now let's get back to our use case here. We've done enough looking around this spec template. So most of these things seem to be filled out, which is wonderful. But if I go down here to the bottom of the page, I see some empty sections. Uh, suitability. I don't know if it's kosher, halal, vegan, vegetarian. I don't know the country of origin. Will the salt be able to be sourced domestically in the United States? I don't know what allergens might be present. So what's the problem here? A lot of the times, not to pick on R&D teams, but they get off to the races and say, we are going to have a kosher salt that has no milk sourced from the United States on the Pacific coast, whatever it may be. And you end up three months down the road realizing that you can't source that type of ingredient. This is where our module becomes very different than existing solutions and that we are a network connected specification tool. Let me show you what that word means. So I got a feeling a lot of the folks on this webinar uh, work with trace gains already. Maybe they have supplier management up and running like these tabs in Compass. 
Maybe they even go into Market Hub every so often to find a new supplier of an ingredient. That's exactly what you can do here. So let me do a soup to nuts example or a uh, salt to salt example here. Let's pretend we wanted to find someone who could sell us salt. We might go into Market Hub, which I've pulled up here in another tab, and do a really simple search for salt. If I did this in the live version of Market Hub, you'd get thousands of results. These are all demo companies for our sake today. And let's look at this very first one. Uh, basic ingredients out of Minneapolis. Apparently they pull off a sea salt despite being uh, right there in the middle of the country. Maybe it's a lake salt. So check this out. If I go into their entry here, you can see that they filled out a small set of the standard trace gains forms, but ones that are very relevant to the info we need to build a spec. They filled out the trace gain standard allergen statement. Having never even worked with them before, since they made this public and are keeping it up to date, I can actually do a little preview of it, see exactly how they filled out which allergens are there. Apparently some fish might make it for the same manufacturing plant. Now while this looks like a PDF at the moment, remember these data points because they're going to come into play in just another second. So let's say this person seemed viable. What might we do? We might contact the vendor, ask for a sample, ask some general questions. But the more likely scenario is we would connect to them. Connecting to a ingredient or a supplier, the company basic ingredients, is almost like a Facebook or LinkedIn type request. They go in onto their profile, they say, yeah, we'd love to sell this ingredient to you. And the moment that occurs, you can start to download their documents that they loaded into the system into your unique version of supplier management. For example here, if I go to the item supplied page now, since I did a little bit of this in advance, and I go over to my salt items, I could see how basic ingredients is in here. They have an entry. We collected up 100% of their documents and they happen to be the exact same ones we saw when we were looking in Market Hub. Here's our local copy of those. Let's take this a step further. So let's go back into our spec, which I still should have open in this tab here. And we could get a little glimpse to those documents at the bottom of our spec page. Here's your suppliers, basic ingredients. Here's their documents. What's really nice here is we can take the data off of these and in one fell swoop, copy it into our spec. And it's literally as simple as saying, let's copy values, do it from basic ingredients, Minneapolis. Let's copy over everything they have where we have a blank value currently and they have something new for us. I hit copy and right there on the spot, now our spec is being pretty well fleshed out with real live data. There's that piece of info about fish being from the same manufacturing plant. So, so far as we've been building out this spec, I've talked about a few types of collaboration. We did that external round just right there where we pulled in info without even that company basic ingredients having to lift much of a finger. We also might have done some internal collaboration, passing this around between departments, having people add in details that are just relevant to us. You know, what moisture level will we want the salt to be so that it works in our recipe? Something like that. We offer one more big tier of collaboration that I want to show off today. So you may notice we still have some empty data fields. Oh, we're not confirmed if it's organic. We don't know exactly how they're going to be delivering this to us. What we can do is kick off a round of collaboration with our suppliers and collect that information here on the spot. Since I'd already shared this previous version of the spec with suppliers, why don't we jump over and say let's make a new version and we'll call this our collaborative version of the spec. I create new version and it drags over everything. Now we're on version five. Now let's start doing that sharing flow. Create shared specs. We get to decide on a few things here about what style of information we want our supplier to see. We probably don't want them to see everything under the sun or about our internal processes. So we're gonna let them see this via a shared template. We're gonna allow them to make changes, of course. That's part of the goal. And in this round of collaboration, let's kick it over to just basic ingredients and uh, also send a little note to our own specification team to alert them that we're doing this. I tap share, and all that happened on our side here is that we created this parent-child master share relationship, and now I can see we have the master spec that we're on and this shared version for basic ingredients. I toggle over there, not much to see since we haven't gotten a response from them yet. But let's put on our supplier hat for a moment I have over here in a different window, the free portal that basic ingredients logs into. 
So if they went over to their home page, they probably would have gotten a note saying we want to collaborate with them. They would see all these bars saying what work they've done, what they haven't. And they'd see under the requested specifications area that there are still a few spec requests that are needed to be responded to. So here's one. There's that salt one. I could sort these by date. It would come right there at the bottom. And when they log into this, they can see that slightly limited view of our spec. So they don't see any of those approvals, our internal staff names. That's none of their business. What they see is what they're recorded to fill out. And you can even decide which fields might be required by your supplier. You can't dictate what packaging type they're going to send it in, but you're going to put that, put the onus on them to fill it out. That's what this tiny little red asterisk is symbolizing. So let's do their work right here. Uh, packaging type, I'll stick with the picture. We'll call it a burlap sack. 25 packages for case. And I'll say it's uh, 1,500 pounds. Now, if I try to save my work here as I'm going along, the system's smarter than that. It says, heads up, are you sure about that? This has got to be between zero and 1,000 pounds. So we don't let them send you back information that's way erroneous or skip over particular fields. So here, I'll narrow it down to 750 pounds instead. And maybe I'll change one piece of data that's already there. Instead of being very coarse, it's just uh, a little coarse. Maybe they would change around one of these different range fields. I'm not going to do that today. But let's also have them provide that information. Yeah, we can do organic. By the way, if this particular user didn't know any of this info, they could forward it along to a coworker, also put in additional comments, maybe even upload some documents. Who knows? Even pictures of their facility might be handy at this stage. But let's bring this home. So I'm going to save my work right there. And more importantly, I'm going to submit it. It pulls open a little bit of an overlay where they can put in their password, which becomes part of the audit trail. Hope I got that right. And then they put in a comment saying, a few changes were made. And I'm pretty sure I did my password wrong, so I'm going to fix it right here on the spot. Second try. Let's see how that goes. All right. I think that one worked. I'm glad I caught that early. So their work is done. Let's hop over back to our side for a moment. I'm sitting here on that shared spec. Odds are I wouldn't be here waiting, tapping refresh, but in this case I did. And obviously the page changed quite a bit. Now far more likely you would set up an automated workflow yet again that would alert just the right person that the supplier has responded. Let's see what they can do now. So they arrive on this page, they see the comments that we put in, a few changes. But what are those changes? Uh, you might not want to scroll through this gigantic page saying, where are they, where are they, where are they? But what you'll see here is we gently put a little border around it. Now it says a little coarse. Previous value was very. But the easiest thing to do at this stage is to say, show me all of the changes they made in one handy interface. You can even decide which of these data points you want to drag over from the response into your master spec. For anything that was brand new info, of course I'm going to want to drag that over. Why not? But maybe ugh, I want to keep my master spec as saying very coarse. And the fact that their salt is just a little coarse, good for them, whatever. But I don't want to drag that value over, but I'll be accommodating and let that be. So I'll say apply changes, and it'll drag those four data points into my master spec. Now it says here there's only one difference from the master at this level. And since we're okay with that, I'm probably going to go in and say I accept that. Yet again, it would make me re-enter my password. And maybe I put in a comment saying minor difference is okay. And the true challenge of typing while speaking is evident there. I'll say that's just an internal comment. So right there, through a pretty simple amount of steps, I built out this fifth version of our specification, putting the onus on our supply chain to provide the information, some of which they did way early, putting it in Market Hub, some of which they put in at this very latter state through live collaboration. Now, we're coming up on the end of time here for the demonstration, but there's a few last things I wanted to show off. So now that you have everything in here, what do you do with it? Maybe you need to share this with a coworker or even make it self-serve. We give all sorts of interfaces where you can blast this out. Maybe a certain person asks for the allergen statement around this material. You could kick off a quick email to a certain grouping of people. Or even better, if there's a consistent set of info you need to grab, you can export your spec, even translate it to a different language right there on the spot. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't go up one level here and look at at least one finished good style spec. 
I'm gonna hop into our herbal digestion blend since it's at the top of the page. And there's not really too many extra concepts to introduce. It's still the same idea. Multiple sections, data that you want to have filled out. But in this case, it's gonna be a little bit more relevant to a finished good. Might have things like an overall review date where you have a countdown timer for when you need to recheck it. An ingredients list, a picture of the bottle, probably more testing details, but also instructions on how you actually make this. In this case, a very simple green powder to capsule to bottle process. You can imagine though, how it's these types of instructions, uh, details around how it's going to be coded, where the barcode should go, what it should look like on the label that you need to be sharing with either your own production facility or with co-manufacturers. And we could do that in the exact same process here. In this case, the supplier of the ingredient is actually a co-manufacturer. So you'd blast this out to them, they would sign off, maybe you wouldn't give them the rights to edit the spec, and they would just send back a note saying, we will make it exactly the way you said, or maybe they would deny it and say, we can't quite grind the um, green powder to the right level. All right, I think I've hit 20 minutes there on the spot, so I'm gonna pull us back up to the top level of specification management, and uh, we can move on to what's next. Ruben, how's your day? Everything going well? It is going well. Uh, Fabulous, thank you for joining <laughs> us in the chat. Uh, everybody, thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome to the QA portion of our specification management session. Uh, if you'd be so kind, please feel free to type your questions into our chat box. For the best viewing experience that we have, we recommend clicking on the button to enter theater mode. Theater mode's great, show everything up on the big screen. Uh, if you happen to experience any issues or anything like that with audio, please click on the support tab in the top right corner uh, and then select get help. After the session, we would really appreciate it if you take the time to fill out our survey. Uh, that survey exists below in the presentation information section. So with that, Ruben, this is a very, very exciting day. Day two in the TG Con, it's almost done. Uh, we got specification management we're talking about. We got an extension to supplier management. Now with all these new sessions, we've got a foundational component of formula management. We're gonna hear more about that later tomorrow. That's great. Very important module we have, and uh, we've got some questions here. We got Brian coming in hot with the first question here. Can we <laughs> export the master spec as a PDF to send to our customer? And how customizable is that? Our finished goods spec varies from many sauces, so it'd have to be very flexible. What say oh, you, good sir? Uh, yes, is very much the answer on that. You actually described the process, Brian, pretty well. So you're working internally, you're coming up with your spec, editing all those fields like we just saw in the demo. But we realized when you want to do some collaboration with your customer or the other way in the supply chain, you don't always want to share everything under the sun or have it be editable. So we've worked in a few different tiers of control. You could share portions of your spec, let them see certain areas, but not others. You could share the whole thing as a PDF for them to simply sign off on, or you could share it as actual editable fields for them to collaborate on. Um, the good news about this is that it's not only customizable, I always hate that term, it's more so configurable, meaning that when you set up your version of the module, we actually have built-in tools for you to set it up just as such, or also to edit that down the road as well. So we've heard cases just like you described there where maybe you're selling your, you said sauces to multiple customers, maybe one customer needs to see every single detail under the sun, Whereas another one that's not quite as exacting just wants to see uh, you know, a little flavor profile and a picture of it. You could decide for each of those people what you share to them so it could fit their need. So pretty configurable on that front. That's fabulous. Brian, hope that answers your question. Uh, along with that, we have another question. Um, with resp uh, in response to access, how many users can access specification management and what levels of permissions can be assigned? I guess they're questions more about granularity. Yeah, yeah. Well, to get the first part out of the way, um, like pretty much all of our modules, we offer unlimited seats. We're not charging by you have three employees or 10 or 15. And the reason is we want this to be your kind of source of truth, your place where people go to get specs and have the ability to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. That said, you probably don't want somebody who needs to pull the specs so they know how to produce a good on the actual factory floor. You don't want to give them the same permissions to edit it, adjust it, approve it, delete it, 
as somebody else. Mm -hmm. so we have a couple tiers like along that lines of um, configurability again. One of them is certain roles can see only certain subsets of information, kind of similar to what was going on in Brian's question a minute ago. You could also have then the next tier of permissions of what rights they have within that area. And we follow kind of the standard ones, you know, do you have the rights to create, uh, read, update, delete, edit, etc. called crude permissions is what some people call them. So yeah, that's really the goal, like give access to everybody, make sure they can do just the type of task they need and let it be more of a self-serve system than uh, you having to push it out, one person owning it all. Fabulous. Our next question comes in, can multiple raw ingredient specifications be combined as a recipe or formula? Uh, this is one I was anticipating. Uh, whoever asked that one should be signing up right now for tomorrow's session, uh, another one of our spotlights on formula management. Yes. So that's exactly the steps we've been taking at Trace Gains. We said, all right, we're gonna need specs to detail raw materials. The next question that came in our minds and every one of our customers' minds was, oh, so what can I do with this information now that I have the allergens and the heavy metal amounts and the organoleptic properties of all these different ingredients? So this module formula management is exactly that. It says, combine these five ingredients and run a quick report on the cumulative properties. Could I make an organic claim? It will look to see, ah, were each of those five different ingredients organic or whatever else. So check out that session. I think same time as this one tomorrow. Awesome. Absolutely. I hear the, uh, I hear the speakers in that are pretty good. So yeah, you go ahead and check on that. <laughs> uh, uh, new question coming in. Uh, can you export or print specifications? Yes, you can. And again, we give maybe even too many options on that front. So you can set up, um, it's generally exporting as a PDF, as most documents are. And you can decide like, do I need to export everything under the sun? We often saw, I think the first customer we onboarded, they had a 22 page long spec, but they said, you know what, like our quality team needs to get just these 15 fields so they know how to test the product. Our marketing team needs to get these eight fields. They should fit on one page. So we set up a way to have like um, export kind of templates where you could say export these few fields for this person, these few fields for that one. And if you needed to do something ad hoc, say, oh, I need sections one, three, five, and seven today. There's also a way to build those out right on the fly. It's literally a button that says share this spec and it wraps it up as a PDF, whatever subsections you picked. So pretty much uh, that. Okay, fantastic. Uh, we have a, a, a question from Lindsay. Uh, how does this work if you have multiple suppliers providing the same item? Oh, that's super interesting. So I got a feeling this comes from somebody who is using supplier management already. So to kind of work our way from that concept, in trace gains, you'll have like what we call an item. So this is the salt that you use in a lot of different of your finished good products, let's say. So maybe that has an ID, salt, one, two, three. You're probably getting this ingredient from multiple suppliers. So you'll have records in the system that say salt one, two, three coming from supplier X, Y, Z. Salt one, two, three from supplier ABC. Mm -hmm. That same paradigm continues itself in specification management. This time though, it's what we call a master spec where you'll have all your details of your salt, like moisture percentage. And then you have almost child versions of that spec. We kind of call it master shared, where the shared ones represent each of the suppliers you're working with. So you can collect up details from multiple suppliers, have a group of five suppliers agree to your one master spec. We definitely handle that sort of relationship. Fabulous, okay. Uh, Celia's on board. Celia, thank you so much for your question. She asks, are we able to add multiple chemical tests to a spec? I only saw one in your salt demo. Yeah, yeah. as many as you want is the answer. And people have been doing it in a few different ways. Some people want to just kind of plop in their whole testing paradigm in one of those rich text fields, you know, put down your instructions on how to test, put in a table of how well it goes through certain sieves or whatever. Other people really want to break it down kind of parameter by parameter. And they sometimes have these really rich sections where it's, this is the salmonella test we're going to run. This is the certain microbial amounts, how many colony forming units per gram. This is the moisture. This is the salinity. This is yada, yada. Make as many of those as you want per specification template. Okay. Uh, that's fabulous. Uh, Lindsay is asking, do specs managed in spec management feed the SC module for COA review upon receipt? They soon will is the answer. 
So not of at this moment, if you're having your salt spec, which we keep coming back to, and you're also receiving salt, uh, those are just ever so slightly disconnected at the moment. That's what we're building out next though. So we wanna have a spot where you can maintain your master spec and spec management module. Then in supplier compliance, as we call it, as COAs start to arrive from each of those different suppliers, it compares that value automatically pulled off the COA against what you have in spec management. So those two are about to be linked at the hip once they come to full fruition. And that'll be, I think, in 2021 and probably around the first quarter or so. Absolutely. And if anyone else is, is, uh, is waiting for that functionality or interested in that functionality, please feel free uh, to you know, contact us. Uh, as you see on the screen, we'll get you hooked up with your AE and we'll make sure that you are first to know when that comes out because a lot of people are asking for that. Uh, that's fantastic. Excellent. Okay. Uh, next question. Um, where do you see the most efficiency gain in this module? Gosh. So one of the things we always go back to on trace gains is how so much of this information lives outside of your four walls. You know, as much as I'd like to be able to conjure up a specification for a raw material and hope that there's suppliers out there across the world that can meet it, that's not really reality. And what we heard time and time again was the pain of building out a raw material spec when so much of that data is out there. So we built in a lot of efficiencies where you can build a spec off of an ingredient that you might have already found in Market Hub. Mm -hmm. So literally within a few clicks, and I think we had part of this in the demo, you could see how you would build that spec off of existing data, literally dragging it over. You still might be missing some fields. You can rely on the supplier to log in for free and give you the rest of that data. Mm -hmm. What that all does in the end, I mean, yeah, you're saving time transcribing the information, but more so you're saving time not going down that dead end route where you're looking for an organic kosher salt sourced from South America that has certain chemical properties to it and it just doesn't exist. So start working down a route where you're never really gonna diverge and have the wrong ingredient, just be working towards perfection all the way through. That's, that's yep. fabulous, it's good. Uh, next question, what does the onboarding process look like for specification? Yeah, it's relatively similar to the rest of our modules. We have yet another of our famous um, configuration workbooks, just a nice fancy Excel document that gets you up and running. This version has kind of two different tabs in it. One tab helps you set up your different spec templates. So maybe you're pulling in a liquid ingredient, a raw vegetable, maybe you're tracking a finished good in the module. You get to decide on this first tab what data fields are gonna show up in that spec template, what order they're gonna be in, whether they're gonna be editable by certain people, all that jazz. The second tab helps you actually upload your existing specs into the system might take a little bit of Excel wizardry to kind of get your current data into a nice layout that matches up to our system. But once you do that, hopefully even programmatically, you can upload all of your existing specs in one fell swoop. So on day one of logging in, you see your 500 or 1,000 specs sitting right there in trace gains. So that's usually the main two steps. And honestly, the training part of it is probably the simplest portion of it all. It's a yeah. pretty intuitive interface, so that hasn't been a hurdle. And, and, and those training people we have, they're, they're really good, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's good. Okay, uh, Susan has a question. Uh, how do you handle specs for suppliers who won't download or use trace gains? Yeah, so that's always going to be a little bit of a hurdle, really, no matter what module you're in. Our goal is particularly true and what we've been building up to this date is to not make anyone do things in two different systems. Mm -hmm. So just because you can't get a supplier to collaborate in trace gains, hopefully nine out of your 10 will, one won't. We still want you to be able to track that spec in our system. And then you're just kind of replicating the current process. So if they're emailing you the details about their moisture percentage for salt, you could just transcribe that in for them into the system. But we don't want you to have to handle all of that in a separate spot. You could still have a record for them, a shared spec record, just not one that they're going to be updating themselves. Of course, this is a little bit of a headache. So we want everyone to make their way towards 100%. So we have a yep. team yet again that's going to train your suppliers get them more comfortable. Hopefully they see the benefits and realize they're going to be saving time too. And right now we're at about 80%, right? So we're about 80% of just clicking and getting the information and we'll work with you to handle that 20% that we got. So you got a lot of efficiencies there. Uh, I know that we alluded to this. Lindsay is asking a question. I don't know if we answered it fully. Are we able to take a spec from spec management into search market hub for a similar alternative? 
Yeah, that's actually a little bit of something that's coming together with formula management coming on top. There's literally a button that says, oh, here's the ingredient you need to replace and here's the properties you wanted it to have, organic, whatever. You click this button to search Market Hub if you're unsatisfied with the robustness of your supply chain at the moment. Mm -hmm. That button probably won't reside in specification management because we're seeing it as a little bit more of a use case one step down the road in the next module, but it's pretty much exactly what you're thinking. If you have all these properties, can you precede that into a search so that you're finding like elements right there? There you go. Uh, and then one last question. Uh, is there an audit trail for specs to be able to track changes? Yep. Just like all of our modules, uh, there's a little button. I think my face in the demo was hovering over it the whole time, but you click audit trail and it pumps out kind of an Excel style file that shows at what time, what person changed what field, some people even work in a comment box where someone has to write, and here's why I made such a change on this date and make that required. So yeah, absolutely, that's table stakes for a system like this. Absolutely, that's, that's fantastic. Okay, we are at time right now. We don't have any other questions come in, uh, but I will tell you this. We've had a great presentation today on SpecMan. Uh, we've got some great questions from our audience. There's a lot of buzz around spec specification management new product development, formula management, the future of the industry, those types of things. So, you know, thank you very much to the audience for going ahead and joining us for today, for the session and for the Q&A. If you missed it, Barb Stuckey's keynote on trends in driving innovation and beyond. If you're interested in learning more about these topics, uh, we've got the art and science of NPD with Gary Nowacki, Greg Hartman, Mike Hubbard of TG, as well as Doug Bird from Matson. And don't forget to attend our solution spotlights tomorrow uh, tomorrow morning, we've got uh, a product roadmap by AJ Dolan that talks about some spec man, some uh, formula management, things like that. We're almost done. We got one more day. We're going to bring it home. Uh, I think we got uh, two more solution spotlights. So that's all good. Really appreciate you taking the time to fill out the session survey. Your words matter. We're going to choose some people. We're going to send out some gift cards. So please go ahead and do that. Thank you all again. Ruben, it's always a pleasure, sir. See you and tomorrow. We'll see you guys. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.